Hey guys, Garrett the 97 again, once again with some more new loot. Immediately starting off with the newest ones. The Unicorn Gundam Unit 2 Banshee Norn Destroy Mode. But unfortunately, I already started building this one, so well, when we have a look at the runners, they're already unpacked. What I really like is this clear blue piece here. And in the beginning, I was afraid that this was just gonna be a normal blue piece, but it's actually translucent plastic. And some gold. I also really love this runner. And what this runner means, no wait, what this runner here means is that some pieces on the Unicorn in Norn that were stickest, this time we're actually getting as parts, so that already can't go wrong. Really nice beam rifle, usual gray, and well, nothing too much going on. Got some really nice parts, and I think this is gonna end up looking really nice. Yeah, putting all this back in there, if it's willing. There we go. There and there. Guess you know when you get this, you just have to start building it right away. Next up, we have the Strike Rouge. I mean, the L-Strike was one of the best model kits. So far we've had, so the Rouge is also gonna be awesome. And, let's see. Oh yeah, Beam Saber, that is something our Banshee here didn't come with. And let's see what the runners of the Rouge tell us. And it looks like, our 100 yen is only gonna go towards the stickers. Yeah, because we should get some marking stickers. Which... Oh, I see, they're behind the normal stickers there. So that's a small sheet of sticker that is worth 100 yen. Unless there is... Like... Um, an extra sticker. Oh well, I'll figure that out once I build it. So far this is looking pretty nice, we got a really tiny yogurt pink. There, and there. The final new model kit is the Wing Gundam Zero, which was released all the way back, um, the 6th I believe. Let's see what this gives us. Hmm. Fair amount of stickers, but so far looking pretty good. And I really wonder how this is gonna be. And yeah, it's technically a parts form, but really, that's not too big of a deal. And it probably helps structural integrity quite a lot. So, as long as it's done well, I don't really mind swapping out the feet. And I don't think it's that much trouble anyway. I mean, when we look at the Zeta Gundam, you have to rip the entire thing apart. So just changing out some feet, well, I can live with that. And then the next new thing is, of course, not a model kit, but the Mobile Suit Girl Unicorn Gundam. And looking at it, the box does seem to be kind of small, which makes me wonder did I really pay that same amount of money, even more, for the Banshee Girl? Well, of course I did. And so far, this is also looking really great, and I can't wait to open this up. But the question is, uh, should I first open this up, or finish building the destroy mode? Uh, now look at the box, well, we of course have the usual stuffs going on in the back. Then, a model kit I've had to wait for, for about a month, because this was supposed to get a restock last month, but it was postponed the Gym Sniper, and I think this is also gonna be a very nice model, because there's just a lot of different things going on with this machine. We already have these nice wires there for the sniper rifle, and ooh, that's what I like. The jewel just, wait, isn't that the exact same thing as the one we get with the Warhammer 44 skill? That would be funny. Actually, yeah. Totally gonna compare that one. Let's see, we got, ooh, sniper rifle. 
And a lot of weapons this thing comes with. We have a missile launcher. And oh yeah, the generator, more wires. Let's see what else we got in here. Uh, uh, shields, polycaps, lots of polycaps, but I take out the manual and I think we don't even use half of the polycaps that come with it. So let's see. Uh, screws. It has been a while since I built a mobile suit that requires screws. The beam sabers, usual ones, nice visor, extra hands, and a sheet. You know, when you want to tuck them in bed, you need a sheet. Let's put all the things back. And really, I think this is going to be awesome with all of those accessories going on. You can't go wrong if your mobile suit comes with a plethora of accessories. Also comes with a beam rifle, if I'm not mistaken. I can't immediately see it on the runner, but I'm pretty sure it also comes with a beam rifle. Check. Or we can just check the box and yes, yeah, comes with a beam rifle. Oh, and of course, what ground gym wouldn't come with a machine gun? Though it looks like you do have to technically paint the beam rifle. So putting that back. Then, here is a non-Gundam kit. It's been a while since I bought one, but here is the VF-1S, which doesn't quite fit into screen. The VF-1S Valkyrie from Macross, or Robotech if you're American. And this is also from Bandai, so I wonder how this is gonna be. I mean, a non-Gundam Bandai kit, I don't think um, that I can really think of a non-Gundam Bandai kit that I've built. Let's see, actually quite a thick manual as compared to Mosquerays, but that's, well, maybe because it's in such a weird format that they need, they simply need more room. And from what I can immediately tell is that this isn't as color accurate, but we do get a lot of stickers because Ah, here it was. That is a lot of stickers going on. But what are those? I oh, know those are all peel off stickers. And then people complain that the latest high grades require a lot of stickers. Now, this is a lot of stickers. Oh, awesome! All right, I hadn't noticed that when I opened the box. You actually get the option to use water slide decals or peel off stickers. That is awesome. That's fantastic. And well, the normal one, the gun pod, normal parts. Yeah, this looks very Bandai ish. So let's put this back. And now I'm really looking forward to building this. Though, I'm not sure if I'm gonna try to go for the water slide or for the peel offs. Let's see the manual and uh, what is a model kit without an advertisement? Macross Frontier. It's a series. Putting this back. Can transform between Fighter, Gearwalk, and Batroid mode. And what is a Valkyrie? Without the super parts. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the Valkyrie was on sale for I think 33% and this was 40% off. So I just went ahead and picked it up. And yes, once again, very Bandai-esque. And let's see, does this also come with... Yeah, once again, choice between peel-off stickers or water slide decals. That is really fantastic. But if... Let's see... Hmm... The water slide decals seem to be somewhat bigger, but I can't really see anything... That's not on the peel of stickers. Well, I guess we just get something extra, or maybe it's the numbering. No, oh, well, we'll figure that out. Once again, a rather big manual for what we're getting. And I think this is also going to require a bit more painting on those missiles, because we're not sure, maybe. Come on. Close. But this is definitely gonna enhance the look of my VF-1S. So putting that on top. And next up, I have a bunch of old ones. And that's because 
Well, Bandai had this action going on where if you bought a 144 scale high grade <clears throat> or just any 144 scale from what I could tell from the action, because when you clicked on it, you just got pretty much all the 144 scales, they would give you a free weapons slash joint set. This is important to know because I bought a lot of cheaper 144 scales, but when I opened the box, there were no weapons or joint sets in there. They did mention that it was while stock loss, but I bought, um, I think it was either the Wing Zero or the Strike Rouge was bought almost immediately after the action started. And it's still on the website being advertised under the Gundam section as, hey, buy a 144 scale kit and you'll get a free action. Uh, you'll get a free weapon slash joint set while stock lost. So, which would lead me to believe that they're still doing it. So that means either one of two things happens. Either they forgot to put in the weapons slash joint sets or two, they're practicing some really shady business practices. Because, you know, while stock loss and that gives them an easy way out, just saying, well, sorry, we ran out of stock, even though we're still advertising it a couple of days after we ran out of stock. So send them a message. But of course, my package arrived on Friday, so well, Friday afternoon, so I couldn't send them a mess. Well, I send them a message, but they're of course not gonna respond until Monday. So, gonna have to wait a bit, but I really hope that their customer service will once again come through. And this makes it well, actually, the second time in a row I've had problems with my packages. Fantastic! Moving on uh, with the better things then. We have a 144 scale Hizak, the Federation version, and we're having a blue machine gun. But this is my third Hizak, pretty much know what I'm in for. And well, the Hizak, it's not a great model kit, it's just a nice average model kit. And this is once again starting to look like an Wait, is that what I think it is? It absolutely is. Wait. Oh, I see. That's the. Well, that's not something we see all the time. It's actually a symbol of the Earth Federation itself. Not the stylized star and moon, but actually from the flag or the Titan thing. Well, that's really cool. Why didn't they do that with the Titans version? Well, I guess they just um, forgot about that. But that's actually really neat. And they should really uh, do have a more I mean, that's pretty cool. I already like this model kit. So actually, this is a really good model kit to buy in conjunction with some Titans mobile suits. Even though this is the Federation version. Then the other high grade I got for this action is Shars Zaku 2. It's not the greatest high grade, but I figured it was about time that I bought the original one. What I really like is pink hoses. Well, it doesn't quite look as pink on camera, but under the lighting, I opened it up under. Um, must have been something with lighting, but these look really pink when I opened the box. So that was quite a shock that this model kit was so pink under that lighting. But you know, so far, um, I don't really have any particular hopes for this model kit. Also because. Well, when you look at it price-wise, the normal Zaku is a much better buy because this is the same price as the normal Zaku, but it actually comes with nothing. It doesn't come with the missile pods that go in the leg. Essentially what happened is the missile pods got exchanged for the Commander Fin, which isn't really the best deal. But hey, it's Char's mobile suit, it's Char's Zaku, so that's probably a selling point in and of itself. Next up, we have some seek no grades because believe it or not, these were actually eligible. F these were actually eligible for the action. So if you bought these, you should have technically gotten a free joint set. But the boxes are empty because I just wanted something quick to build, and I needed something to get my frustration out for not getting a weapon set. And you might be able to tell, but I'm kind of bummed about it because you know. You buy some stuff, especially for that action, and then you don't get your stuff. And actually for seat no grades, these are pretty damn good. 
I wasn't quite expecting this. Guess well, my only experiences with Seat No Grids have been pretty bad in the past. But what I really love about the Raider here is the color is the color the, the, the color is actually molded in red, which means that the color separation of the No Grade Raider's torso is actually much better than the color separation of the Strike and pretty much all of the other G weapons. Way to go, Raider No Grade! You actually are better in some ways than the normal ones. Well, than the high grade ones. Good job! You should feel so proud as a no grade. Then we have two Zaku 2s. Reminds me of that guy with three PS3s. And these are, of course, great Zaku models. And I think I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is one of my favorite Zakus of all time. Pretty much because one, is extremely detailed, and two, even though this is a cheap model kit, you can actually make four versions of the Zaku. And they're actually different. Also really nice is marking stickers. Great. The only thing that I could possibly say that's missing here is uh, number stickers. But really, I'm not gonna complain about that. And when you look at the manual, you can instantly see how you can make your four types. And the really cool thing is that there's actually some distinction made. Ah, here we go. Between the F-type here and the J-type here, we have different arms and there are thrusters on the F-type, but they're covered up on the J-type. So that's one thing. And of course, we also have a different shield. And then we of course also get the commander antenna. So you can make the F-type, the S-type, the J-type, and the J-Type Commander Type, because you still have that Commander Antenna. And just for having the option between a normal head and a Commander Antenna, already makes this kit 10 times, no, let's say 3 times better than the normal Hydra Universal Century. Also, this kit looks a lot more detailed, and I would say a lot more like a Zaku should look. I only have one of these so far, so... Well, the one I had was from the... Zaku 2 versus Ground Gundam set, so I'd really love to get these as normal releases. The ones that are coming now are very old ones, all the way back to 1994, back when I was two years old. We have some G Gundam, because yes, believe it or not, these were once again, um, once again, if you bought these, you would get a free... Um, no, I'm just not going to say it anymore. Let's see, I really wonder what these are going to be like. I only have the Spiegel Gundam for... Well, I only have the Spiegel Gundam and some of the hyper modes. So, right now, um, I've only had good model kits from the G Gundam line, but I'm pretty sure this is about to change pretty quickly. Let's see, um, this one is still looking okay. This one doesn't look like it's going to be too bad. And we've got a lot of those fantastic foil stickers going on. Who, King of Heart. And yeah, we got... Why is it yellow? Why is the Beam Saber yellow? It's white and pink. It's not yellow. Why is the Beam Saber yellow? Regardless, moving on. It's an old no grade from the 90s. Logic doesn't apply. Put that back. Next to the Dragon Gundam. And this one, well, it's not as bad as we was expecting. I was somehow expecting those claws to be sticker. So, in a weird way, I'm not too disappointed about this model kit. It's still kind of... Oh, cool! That white bird's actually gonna be white! Well! Well, well, well! Looks like this guy isn't gonna be too disappointing after all! Well! I'm surprised! Putting him back in here, so so far so good, but I think that's definitely gonna end with the Gundam Max, or judging from what I've seen from my hyper mode, this, of course, isn't gonna be as color accurate, and yeah... Uh, Hmm, I think this is gonna be less 
appealing. Also because of proportion of kind out of whack with the smaller kit. So you got a maxer, yep. Queen de Spade. Mobile tray system. Yes, English, I speak very good. Well, Chippity Croc was American, so you, you should be able to speak English. Way to go, Chippity. Well, let's see what they wrote on the Dragon's Gun manual. Let's see. Club Ace. Aww, no English. Let's see what our French stereotype has to offer us. A very... Hmm, white with a greenish tint looks kind of weird and cheap in a way too. Uh, turning it around... Well, we're not getting a lot of stickers for all the detail he should have, so... Yeah, in this form, this might be one of the worst ones, I guess, because it would technically need a lot of those fine details. Let's see. Jack in Dia. Hmm. Dia. Oh, isn't that the spell they usually use in their Shin Megami Tensei? Yeah, Dia, that's the... Yeah, that's the standard healing spell that they use in the Shin Megami Tensei series. So, looks like the Gundam Rose is a magician. Fair enough. He can use magic. The magical Frenchman. I don't know. Whoa, which one did I open? Ah, oh, the Bold Gundam. And let's see here. Uh, well, not as bad as I was expecting, I guess. Guess hey, they are in the 90s models, so that is pretty much what we can expect. And hey, leftover from the Victory Gundam sets. Nice. Let's see what we have here. Black Joker. Rule of. Oh, they're giving us rules of the Gundam fight. In case you want to organize your own tournament. And, well, I guess proportions could have been somewhat better with the face. But once again, what do you expect from a old, from an old Momo 44 scale? No grade. And then the final one, we have the Rising Gunnam. I'm. This was the one I had the most hopes for, and I haven't opened it up yet. So let's see what is gonna be uh, a white spear. The spear is entirely in blue on the box. So, I don't know, maybe put it on the blue part of the runner. You know, the runner that still has plenty of space left, but no. One. Why not just put it on the blue part of the runner? There's still plenty of space. Ah. Fantastic. Well, once again, logic does not apply to these old 144 scales, obviously. Neo Japan team staff. Nope, you're not a fighter. You're nothing special. You're staff. Thanks. And so I was actually expecting the spear to be molded in the right color. Well, ain't that a disappointment to end up this video? But let's quickly shove these old ones aside. They just want us to close up. There we go. And that's all for this new loot video. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below which model kit you definitely uh, want to have a priority review of. I'm totally gonna build the Unicorn Gundam right now, then the Strike Rouge, Wing Gundam Zero, but I'm not quite sure when I'm gonna fit in the Unicorn Gundam review. And then as for the other model kits, I'm gonna see uh, what I'm gonna do with those. Not really sure if I'm gonna go for the Gym Sniper first, if I'm gonna try out the VF1S, because you know, I haven't built any non-Gundam Bandai kit as far as I can remember. So I really wonder how that's gonna be, but of course the old 144 scale Zaku 2 here is also gonna be awesome. But definitely leave a comment down below and see you guys next time.